Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Dr. Richard Lippman. He's a world-renowned expert in the area of free radical scavengers. He has been nominated for the Nobel Prize in Medicine. He has spoken all over the world about anti-aging interventions. He has written the book, Stay 40 Without Diet or Exercise. Of all of the books that I've read, it's the most comprehensive book about how to have a balanced approach to hormones, how to deal with free radical scavengers, oxidation, and the whole gestalt of anti-aging. There is not a subject that this book does not address, and it is my great honor to welcome Dr. Richard Lippman to its rainmaking time. Good morning. Yeah, thank you, Kim, for having me on your program. I think the first thing I want to discuss with you that I'd like you to establish a frame of reference for the audience is the following. We need to know what a free radical is and why you're making such a strong focus on specialized antioxidants and not just green tea and vitamin E or vitamin C. What is a free radical, first of all? It's one of the most toxic substances on the planet. Free radicals are what's created from nuclear bombs, um, from, from reactor meltdowns, and from radiation you get from, from medical devices. And, and if, you, if you want to scramble your DNA like, like scrambled eggs, if you want to do that, then, then you radiate yourself in the dental office. You, 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 know, you, you expose yourself to other, other toxins that will, that will damage your cells and damage your DNA. And then that's, what, that's what it really does, the free radicals. That's what they do. And that's why it's so dangerous. And most people, they, they don't understand that. They, they think that, that free radicals are just something for scientists. But it really is the most toxic substance on the planet, more toxic than cyanide or botulism or any of these other poisons you hear about. Now, you say in your book that we make or create an average of 7,000 free radicals a day in our body. We actually create more than that. We, we, we have 7,000 hits. From the, that are the free radicals that are damaging and hitting our cells, and then we have natural enzyme systems and, and natural antioxidants to 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 repair that damage or to prevent that damage. Um, uh, but we're actually we're, we're breathing pounds of oxygen every day, every day, and the, and of those pounds of oxygen, less than ounces are converted into free radicals. And we have these wonderful defenses, especially when we're under 50 years of age, to to defend against the free radical salt that's that's going on continually in our body. It's only after 50 that that these wonderful defenses break down. For example, the enzymes catalase and superoxide dismutase, they decrease with aging, and then we're, we're subject to more damage than we were when we were younger. But do you think it was always this way, Dr. Lippman? Do you think that in the caveman days, we had this many free radicals? Well, in, in the caveman days, you, you didn't live longer than, than 30 or 40 years old. The average Roman in the Roman Empire lived... 25 years of age, and a and hundred years ago, the turn of the century, 1900, the average American lived uh, 47 or 48 years of age, so we never lived long enough to, to experience the, the, the lack of enzymes and hormones that we get when we're over 50. And you think that was because of lack of medical expertise at the time and not due to free radicals? You know, under 50, then we have these wonderful defenses that allow us to live longer than other animals. Almost every other animal, with some exceptions, humans live longer than that. We, we even live longer than other primates, the typical chimpanzee, um, bonobos. They, they, only, they only live 50 years. And, uh, humans, humans live on average... At least in Europe and Japan, they live over 80 years of age, and the, the oldest living whom human um, is 122 years of age. And there's several humans that have lived to 100. There's three women who lived to 117, one that lived to 119. A man in Iowa recently died. He was 114. Walter Walter something was his name. So that we really have, really have the potential to live much longer than we do um, if we get under control our free radicals and correct for balance with balanced enzymes and balanced hormones. Now, you heavily studied the cellular level of aging, correct? That's right. You also developed the nicotine patch, didn't you? Yes, that's right. I worked on the nicotine patch and 
and and I actually I promoted and advertised that heavily in the in the late '80s, long before the the these other patches came on the market. So I was one of the originators of the nicotine patch. Now you also have written extensively about crosslinking. Even though it's in your book, I want you to explain why crosslinking is so deadly and why a lot of your emphasis is on dealing with crosslinking and trying to stop it. Talk yeah, about well, it. Well, crosslinking is essentially free radicals are involved, and crosslinking is, in the case of the lens of the eye, for example, that, that causes cataracts, the, the proteins in the eye, they combine with sugars. They bind with sugars, and they, and they bind irreversibly into what is called amide bonds. And, and the more of these amide bonds you get, the, the less you see out of the lens of the eyes, and thus the phenomena cataracts. Cataracts means waterfall in, in, in Greek, in the Greek language. And typically, you know, that's, that's corrected with, with laser surgery where you get new lenses. But actually, there's, there's been a new product out in the market for several years that actually breaks these amine bonds so you progressively get back sight with the lenses you have by, by reversing those amine bonds. Is this Dr. Mario? What is his last name? It's a Greek name, Cruzio. His books are available on on www.antiaging-systems.com. And they're called NAC drops? Yeah, the NAC drops, it's, NAC is, is N-acetylcarnosine, N-acetylcarnosine. Now, they were developed by the Russians. They're patent in Europe. The Russians patent in Europe. Well, who are the Russians? Well, the Russians, the Russians were the inventor of the, of the modern laser surgery called uh, radiokeratotomy in back in the 70s, which everyone in the West laughed at, that they invented this laser surgery. Well, the same sort of scientists out of Russia developed these, these eye drops that actually reverses cataract, so you don't need to use cataract surgery. Now, why would you not need cataract surgery? Well, well 30% of cataract surgeries, they go wrong. There's, there's, you, you're not really cured by these surgeries. So, that, so this is a 100% cure for the, that helping to reverse the, the loss of vision from cataracts, not from other um, phenomena, not from other diseases of the eye, but when it comes to cataracts, because that is, a, again, a free radical, an oxidation process that has caused these amide bonds. Can NAC be used as a preventive measure, like a drop in each eye per day? Yeah, you, you know, you put a drop twice a day in each eye, and progressively you see an increases improvement in eyesight, and my own eyesight has improved from, let's see, my left eye from 55 over 20 to better than 2020. My distance vision is better than 20, but it took about four years to do that. Or my distance vision is 15 over 20. How interesting. So it actually improved. And if you, you know, again, if you, if you look at that website, I have, I have graphs where I've grafted myself and other people. I have graphs where you see a steady improvement in eyesight. And about every nine months when you're eye tested, you'll see improvements. Again, on you know, antiaging-motivate.com, you'll see those, those graphs under the, the NAC drops, the anacetylcarnosine drops. You also created a device to measure amino acids, free radicals, perioxides, and cross-linking. Is that correct? I devised a, a medical instrument to, to tell, that would tell you, um, without probing your body, without, it's called non-invasive, without probing, without giving you a blood test, to tell you what your levels of peroxides were in the body. And the levels of peroxide... Um, would, would indicate what your cross-linking was, what your activity of free radical was. And, and I developed this back in the 80s, and this is part of the work that the Nobel Prize Committee has considered in, in nominating me for the Nobel Prize of Medicine, um, this device. And is it available, this device? No, it's, it's just for scientific use. It's, it's, um, it's, 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 it's actually, it's, its use is to, to further refine which antioxidants are, are best for you and, and which uh, free radical scavengers are best for you. That's what it tells you, this device, because it non-invasively in vivo, it, it tracks the, the course, it tracks the level of antioxidants and, and, and peroxides in your body during a six, ten-hour time span. So you can really see, you know, whatever, whatever um, intrusive, intrusive uh, agents you use, 
like free radical scavengers if they're really working or not. You're not.